Um, so I'm going to talk about M. M is a dancer, and her mum, she wants to keep things really, really simple, but she's also really particular, and M is particular as well, um, in, in that she wants the right person to support her. Um, they went through service and they went through services and they just could not find the right people. They'd find the right person and then they would go off somewhere else or they weren't available at the times. M works um, full time. Oh, sorry, no, she works part time, but her availability, she needs support that's around the times that she needs support, not around, you know, which is often after hours. And one of the things that she wanted support with was um, attending um, a ballet class, getting there and back, and, and, and just having you know, support in that ballet class. She's not here. She, I just, she didn't want her um, photo up there. Um, so it really, really, really was a reluctant thing initially that, um, that they decided to... They, it, was, it got to the point where her mum's just gone, I've had enough. I've had enough, I can't, I can't find the right person, we can't find the right person, how do we do it differently? And, um, and so we sort of, uh, sort of worked out how, we could, how they could recruit a support worker to work with Em, who shared her, her, you know, her passion. So rather than looking for someone with a cert three in disability studies, we had to go looking for a ballet dancer. So that's, that's the right person to support. Her. And someone her age, Em's a young lady, she's in her 20s, she's really vibrant and energetic and she just needed someone who could provide that support that worked for her, that, that ideal match. In the same way Dave and Belinda find supports that, that, that is the ideal match for them. So they just wanted to make the decisions but they didn't want to have to worry about making the payments and things like that and claiming back from the agency, you know. So I think if Helen could have found the, the ideal service, she would have been, she would have been, she would have, you know, sung their praises from the rooftops, but she just couldn't. She just, everything just, it just wasn't falling into place for them. So as plan manager, we helped, we helped them um, craft an ad and recruit that, um, some support workers. And more recently, um, they've had a, um, uh, Em's wanting to learn to cook, um, and she was getting some assistance from a service a while ago and the person didn't like cooking. <laughs> so we've got someone who doesn't like cooking teaching Em to cook. And, you know, it didn't have good co cooking skills either. So it's really important that Em, you know, learns to cook in a way that's, you know, that's, that's appropriate and using good knife skills and things like that. So it's safe for her in the, in the kitchen. Um, but instead she was learning to cook from someone who didn't know how to cook particularly well, didn't like cooking and, and it, you know, it was a bit of a failure. So she's just recently recruited somebody as well who can um, assist with her, cook, her preparing an evening meal for the family on a weekly basis. Um, and yes, of course, and all the, so uh, we assist them with the, um, with the paying of the support worker, the insurances, um, the workers' compensation, insurance, uh, the superannuation, the tax, and all those sort of things as well. Um, that's for an, that we charge an additional fee for payroll. So we charge 5% for helping people with their payroll. But that's just an example of how, I mean, there must be other organisations that are able to do that as well. So is it, uh, Cathy, what was it, um, was there was one mentioned, what was it? Um, Carer Solutions. Solutions. That sounds like they're able to do something very, very similar as well. Yeah, so you're, like I say, you can, if you want to recruit your own staff, you, you can use service providers. You can still use service providers to provide the support. You can engage a service provider in the same way you can if you're plan managing or agency managing. Um, or you can go down the track once again of individual contractors or directly employing your support. A lot of people do come to mind the gap saying, I've had enough with services, service providers I want to directly employ. Well, I'm sorry about 50-50, but others come to us saying, I want to find the ideal service. So, um, so I suppose, you know, there's, there's a lot of people who, who are seeking to directly employ their support. They're actually wanting that direct relationship. Um, so if you're directly employing your support workers, you are the employer, even if you're plan managing, you're the actual, the employer. Um, and, but in this situation, you would be managing the risk and, um, and insurance yourself. Um, with self-managing, you're accountable to the NDIS. Someone, okay. So I'm going to talk about my lovely friend, Kath Marnie, who is one of the co-founders of Mind the Gap. Um, Kath's blind, and then she is driving a golf buggy, 
and it's her analogy for self-direction because she can't drive a golf buggy completely by herself. She sort of might, she, she is driving it, but there's, she has someone beside her saying, go left, go right, the other left, the other right. Um, um, but it's her way of explaining you know, the importance of being in control and being in the driver's seat of her support. Um, so Kath, um, so she's, she uh, recruits her own, she's got a service provider who will allow her to recruit her own support workers. Um, sometimes the service provider might, um, it's, it's probably the most flexible one in Newcastle and it seems amazing because I don't think it's you know, particularly out there. But it's a, um, it's a service provider who will bring um, uh, the people they're supporting in on interviews. So CAF, um, so CAF's, uh, she uses a support a service provider who will allow her to recruit her own support workers and who will let her be let, uh, you know, it should be this way around all the time, who, but um, who has pe people they're supporting on the panel, interview panel when they recruit. Um, and it's a bit like um, they do their recruiting a bit like speed dating, um, where there's a group of um, potential employees, um, uh, support workers, and a group of families and people with disability who are wanting support workers. And I, um, they kind of all sort of interact together in some kind of semi-formal way and, um, and sort of find where there might be a good match as far as support worker goes. But Kath, um, she's doing a lot of work with CEDA that I mentioned there. Um, she's a coordinator of CEDA and she does a lot of presentations and, um, and a lot of talking and, um, um, you know, she's, she's very, very busy. Um, so she, in her plan, she has some funding to assist her in her employment. Uh, Cap's not able to access print material at all. Um, things like reading the mail can take a day, um, you know, to catch up on a week's mail and doing, putting it through a scanner. Um, so she really wanted some support to, to, particularly around accessing print material. Some of it around um, making, doing PowerPoints for presentations, because a lot of people are visual learners. Kath calls um, doing a PowerPoint uh, a um, oh, extreme sport um, because it's quite difficult for her, but to actually create the PowerPoints, she needs assistance to do that. So she was looking for some workplace assistant, assistance to assist her in that. And she found support workers who were lovely and good at doing some other things that, that she needed support, good at assisting with the grocery shopping, but she couldn't find that level of um, support that she needed for, for her work and um, some of her sort of um, uh, I suppose, uh, personal business work. Um, so she decided what she needed was someone who had good secretarial skills. So she used her NDIS funding to go to a temp agency and found secretarial support there. That's what she was looking for. She wasn't looking for the skills of a support worker, even though it was supporting her with her disability, um, supporting her um, where she has difficulty because of her disability. Um, so that was just, I think, the most fabulous way of really, you know, finding innovative solutions to her support needs. And, um, and that's worked out really, really well. I think she's actually even gone a bit a step further now where she's, uh, interestingly, the temp agency, their, the charge for a uh, secretary was less than it is for a support worker under the NDIS <laughs> through a service. Um, so, so it's, it's a double win. Um, she's also looking at engaging somebody who, um, as, as a sort of, as a, once again, with, who has their own ABN um, to provide that secretarial support. So that's just an example of how, um, how people can be really innovative. So CAF's self-managing her support. She's got some um, good tips as well, which I'll sort of cover a bit later if we have a break now on, um, on how to sort of negotiate with service providers. Okay. Well, Jacob and I do it. We are self-direct. So, um, as I said, self-direction means that one twelfth of the funding is put into our bank account, a special bank account for NDIS funding. It doesn't get mixed in with the other income or grocery fund, the grocery bill account and things like that. It doesn't get paid on the mortgage or anything like that. It's on its own NDIS account. Um, we directly employ our support and um, we don't have any service providers involved at all. And in fact, the therapists who Jacob uses are, are private as well. Um, and we've just, um, 
I suppose for a while we've used private therapists because we've just found that we were able to find therapists who could really see our vision, um, Jacob's vision for himself and our vision for Jacob. Uh, so we found that it was really much easier. And then if you have your, you know, you have your own OT and it's not like you get sort of switched to another OT at another time. So, um, so we sort of uh, don't have any, I don't think we've got any services involved in Jacob's life. It's not that services don't have a place, but we've just decided to go this way. We do get more flexibility. Um, so as Kathy was saying, we employ support workers who are a good match with Jacob. So I don't know if anyone noticed, Jacob was here with Lauren today. Um, she's just this fantastic support worker. We brought her from um, Newcastle to Melbourne with us. Um, and um, and she's, she's sort of, she and Jacob are out exploring Melbourne at the moment and uh, meeting up with, the, with one of Jacob's friends from Toastmasters. Um, so Lauren is about the same age as Jacob. I think she's about a year or so younger. Uh, we've, uh, Jacob's got a couple of support workers who are musicians. So Jacob goes to see bands with them. Um, we've got really good, you know, all the support's a really good match. Um, so we've got really great flexibility and um, it, it matches to the assistance required. Like, you know, like uh, Marissa, as I said, not Marissa, M, as I said, had a, um, uh, she needed a dancer as a support. Kath needed a secretary as a support. So it's really that finding that really good match for the support that the person needs. We can be much more creative. And I think this gets particularly interesting when you're thinking about holidays, the time away. Uh, we're not sort of stuck with, um, we can negotiate directly with support workers around um, payment and things like that. There's much, much more scope for creativity. And I think one of the things about the NDIS is the creativity and the innovative ways of finding support is going to come from you guys. The NDIS is not going to come up with, hey, I've got an idea, how about this? It's got to come from the people who are using support um, and really trying to think about the best ways of using it. Um, and the most cost-efficient ways of using support. We can tailor, um, it's, it's tailored, training is tailored to Jacob, so the support, the training that support workers do with Jacob firstly has to be around his communication because he communicates using alternative argumentative communication and secondly we want support workers to undertake some values-based training so all of Jacob's support workers undertake training in social role valorization. I don't know if anyone has heard of that or if anyone's familiar, but really it's about just people understanding that Jacob's vulnerabilities um, and the risk of devaluation and actually countering that with socially valued roles. Um, it's relationship-based support and there's no divided loyalty. So, you know, if, it's, if you're working with a support worker and they're employed by an agency, who are they loyal to, the agency or you? Or it's divided, you know, so, um, so I've heard lots of, you know, support workers talk about, I would like to do something, but the agency won't let me. Um, so we have none of that. It's really just a matter of negotiating directly with Jacob, um, myself, his support circle, family. Um, Excuse me, just that sort of training, you know, that social... Social role valorization. Yeah, where, where Deb will have the answer to that question here. Um, in New sorry, in, we usually it might involve travel to Sydney, so that, um, for our support workers. So um, it's run. Um, there's a course usually run once a year, maybe twice a year in Sydney. But Deb will definitely know the answer to that. Um, so it really is, you know, training so that your support workers understand where you're coming from um, that we find vital. And we can choose the training, you know, we don't want support workers doing an induction on, you know, that a service provider might provide. So it seems to me, um, you know, uh, a waste. We have also trained, we also provide training to our support workers around um, particularly, you know, support for Jacob around uh, what... Um, tra doing transferring, transferring from one place to another, moving, um, mobility, that sort of stuff. Now, so as if you did it through the service provider, it would be manual handling and it wouldn't be tailored to Jacob. We can actually tailor the support, the training to, to Jacob, which means A, the training is better and also the results, of, you know, so the support workers are able to do the job better, but also it's better for Jacob too. Um, you get more bang for your buck directly employing. Really, no doubt about it, it's, it's, it is cost effective. 
Um, you can delegate more tasks. I think the thing that I found amazing, because I told you I love to delegate, um, is that, um, that by taking on self-direction and directly employing, by taking on that additional responsibility, I actually had more freedom to delegate. And it seems like, a con like a, you know, counterintuitive, but it's the way it is, and I'll explain how that happens in a second. We were voting with our feet. I actually think that if a service provider is still providing day programs and segregating people from the community in the way that Deb described, how can they actually be supporting the vision for Jacob simultaneously? How can they say, yes, Jacob Hughes, you belong in the community, by simultaneously saying this group of people doesn't? So we decided to actually vote with our feet. And how it works is, it starts with Jacob and our vision for Jacob to be included in the community. So that's doing all the things that Jacob's interested in. So there's volunteer work, swimming, going to the beach, um, Toastmasters, you know, public speaking, socialising. So it starts with Jacob and him being included in the community. And I want to make really emphasise that is the starting point. Really, really importantly, um, Jacob's support workers, their role is uh, to connect him to the community. Jake needs a fair bit of support to do that, so he needs people who've got really lovely social skills and are very, very good at doing it. One of the funny things we've found is that people with really, really good social skills are either hairdressers or working bars. I don't know. So, you know, three disability studies. For us, our thing that we're looking for is bar work or hairdressing, although we don't advertise for that because there might be other people with good skill sets as well. The support coordinator is exceptionally socially gifted and she does a lot of that connection stuff. So you're looking for volunteer roles and things like that. She'll, be, she'll go out down to the business council in Hamilton where we live and she'll be talking to them about volunteer roles Jacob could have. She'll be talking to others about volunteer roles and sourcing those. So that's part of her role as well. And she then, she also coordinates the support workers who there get on with the work of connecting Jacob to the community. Um, where to start? Uh, this is some advice from Catherine Marnie who I, um, who I spoke about before, who's self-managing. And she just said, you know, really find time to find the support that matches with you. Uh, she felt that whenever she's a bit desperate, she finds support that doesn't match. She's like, oh, I need, some, I need support for this. And then sort of goes with something that doesn't match. Um, and um, the, if you're talking with service providers or talking with people who, who are going to be providing support, making sure that they share your vision, you know. And um, yeah, keep searching until you find your good match and know your deal makers and deal breakers. So these are the deal breakers that Kath has. Do they share your vision? What decisions? Be really clear when you're signing up with a service provider or with our support workers or co um, our support coordinators. What decisions do you make? What decisions do they make? Um, can you negotiate directly with the service, with the support workers? That's really important if you're wanting to have a, a relationship-based support. Um, and making clear what, who, who is responsible for what. So when you're making an agreement with a service provider, really, really articulating who is responsible for what and having it written down in your agreement. And what do we do when we disagree with the people that you're working with? So having sort of some strategies around that.